Welcome to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations and entrepreneurs making a difference and powering the good. And so kicking it off, we're honored to have with us Brad Drake. He is the founder of Luxury Watch Supply. So we get to talk all about watches. So if you're a watch connoisseur, if you're into watches, this is the episode for you. So Brad, you're coming all the way from the UK. How are you doing? (laughs) I'm well, thank you. Thanks for that grand intro. (laughs) <laughs> hey, absolutely. So uh, I love watches. You love watches. This is going to be a fun conversation. But um, let's start out. Give us a little bit of your storyline in terms of what led you to start and launch this company, Luxury Watch Supply. Yeah, well, I'd been involved in a couple of businesses um, in the UK previously. I used to do a lot of headhunting um, and consultancy into large like tech startups and tech firms um, and a couple of VC firms. And um uh, fortunately, I was quite good at it. I managed to build up a few properties I was renting out, and I thought I was having a big trouble trying to get trying to sell one of them. Um, and I saw this article in the papers, the Evening Standard. It's like a commuter. I don't know what would be the equivalent over there, but commuter free newspaper. And um, this guy was trying to sell his place through raffles, and I thought that's absolutely genius. So I looked into it. I thought about the risk of potentially putting a property that's worth quite a considerable amount up for grabs and um, just realized it would mostly be a lot of effort. And I already had a passion for watches. So I thought, let's just give it a try with that. And, um, you know, two years later, it's it's really taken off. We're, we're in a good place right now. So that's the backstory. Quite simple, really. Um, well, but it but, is know. pretty cool because I look at it as a chance to kind of democratize watches and give everyone a chance. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll talk about here in a second how it works, but basically you're giving everyone a chance to have a very expensive watch. And when you talk about the brands, Rolex, AP, Patek Philippe, I mean, you've got some big name watches that you're putting mm-hmm. out there and you're giving everyone a chance for a relatively low amount of money to have an opportunity to win these watches. And so talk about how it works. Yeah, that's it. So, um, I mean, I think, the starting point of how it works the um in in the ideation phase it was very much around uh you know the business economics of it and fr- born out of frustrations of myself trying to go into ad's as i'm sure you know and and many of these listeners trying to go in there and say i love the brand i love these watches when can i get one and the answer is probably never so uh, you know we're trying to combat that um as you said the um, the workings of the business are that we have we cap our tickets for every competition that we run, and as you said, it could be a Rolex GMT, a Rolex Submariner, a Rolex Daytona. It could be uh, an Audemars um, PK Royal Oak. Uh, currently, we've got a competition on for an AP Royal Oak and also uh, the Protect Aquanaut. And for that, we will wrap that in a total amount of tickets, so you know what odds you're playing against, and then sell the tickets. Uh, the ticket allocation so uh, you know anything from in dollars forty dollars let's just say upwards to seventy dollars dependent on um, you know the value of the watch right and there's a gamification piece of this which you point out when people ask is it's it's not a lottery this is a game that fits so that way what you're doing is is trustworthy and and it's uh and it's on the up and up and so you put out there, um, you know, different pieces of a watch and people have to identify, which I kind of like because in a way it's a learning yeah. experience, but the key is, is that it teaches you about watches. So there's some learning involved. It's a game involved. And also the, there's philanthropy we'll talk about too, but talk about the game yeah. aspect of this. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you know, realistically, it's a regulatory measure. We can't just go out there and run a lottery and just have a free prize draw sweepstake. Um, we need that gamification element. And, you know, the advice from a lot of the people that I were working with in the early stages around how to gamify it, I wanted it to be simple, but also relevant. Um, so, you know, that little cropped picture that we've got, you kind of first looking at it really need to know your stuff about watches. You know, we're not trying to attract every single person in the world to play this. I want the watch enthusiasts, the people that are going to keep the watches rather than just sell them on to win. So you need to go on there and know your stuff. And it is, um, you know, it's it's one of those where, like I said, it's it's a really impressive watch. It's a fun game, and then there's philanthropy. So talk about before we dive into just watches in general. Talk about the philanthropic <laughs> focus because even on that, 
you have a really cool philanthropic focus going on right now. Yeah, that's it. I mean, we're speaking off air, right? Um, but to let every, all of the listeners and people watching know, we previously used to donate to um, a handful of charities, just a proportion of our profits. But that really relies on how well the business is doing. And it's backdated on a year end from a tax purpose. So we thought to really have like more of a finger on the pulse type um, effort and, and link to charity, we are planting a tree via a US charity called One Tree Planted for every ticket that we sell. So it's that immediate act of giving. As soon as you say, yes, I want a ticket and that competition closes, we then donate, they do their stuff and plant some trees. So we really think the fact of having it so immediate it should bring more attention to our players and in turn, hopefully they donate and think we can do some good as well. And I think it's a win, win, win for everyone. It's a win yeah. for you as the individual to be able to play the game, have a chance to win a, a really amazing watch, but also to know that your, your opportunity also allows for the philanthropic focus of, Hey, if I buy this ticket, I'm planting a tree. And yeah. that's a really yeah. cool give back automatic. And like you said, it's an automatic, hey, boom, as soon as this is done, we're, we're putting this in motion. Yeah. Talk about yeah. the watches because you mentioned already some of the brands. What has been some of your, in a good way, kind of a smile put on your face in terms of, hey, you put this out and the tickets sell really fast. Like what, what's been some really big <laughs> ones that you've seen that have gone really fast? <laughs> oh, well, do you know, the, the, uh, in the early days, the first competition took three weeks to sell out and I was ecstatic. I was so happy with that. Now they sell out within 24 hours and that's on a regular basis. Now, of course, you're going to have the hot ones, which will sell out within, I think our record was about three and a half hours. That was for the AP Royal Oak Blue Dial um, 15, uh, 15500. They're always going to do well. But I think the one story that really sticks in my mind for us, uh, what, 50th competition, uh, we was doing our hype, we was building it up, and we'd done a um, Patek Philippe Nautilus 5711. It's it's the, the Grail watch, and I'm sure many of your listeners will be doing that same action of nodding their head right now. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, we'd done that for our 50th competition. I mean, at the time, it was most probably worth around £50,000, UK sterling. And um, the person who won was a lo watch lover, thankfully. He still has it. And since that's been discontinued, it's almost doubled in price. So that's the one that really sticks in my mind. You know, we had the competition. I think he bought 10 tickets in total. So spent uh, $600 uh, with the exchange, $600. He now has a watch that's worth around 90,000 pounds. So 120, 115 thousand dollars that's the one that's really in my mind it's just mind-boggling when you think about the opportunity and what is potentially one um so that's the one that's always in mind but yeah as i said the ones which fly out um the ap's always do well and we've just started doing um you may have seen a the rolex gmt trio competition so we have one competition with three watches to win that always does well. You guys seem to like that one very much. So Absolutely. Well, even the Nautilus, to your point, the Nautilus is one of those holy grail watches that everyone talks about. Yeah. To your point, the fact that it's discontinued, the price is skyrocketed. Yeah. But I think that's the key is for anyone who looks at watches as an investment, it really is an investment. And I think yeah. when you look at, you know, and you're now doing cars and other things, and we'll talk about some of the other, the new ventures on your end, but you know, watches are something, especially the, the watches that we're talking about, these higher end watches, they gain in value. So you can be wearing them mm. and years down the road, they're going to be worth way more money. And so very much yeah. like collecting art, these watches become a real investment. So when you look at, yes, there is a high cost of entry, which you obviously are, are like I said, you know, kind of democratizing and allowing us to, to participate yeah. in the reality is what, what you're giving everyone is a chance to really have an investment piece that's going to gain in value as they keep it. And, you know, the whole thing is uh, with, with Patek Philippe is you don't, uh, you don't own it. You, you are, uh, what, what is it? You're loaning it to your next generation. So it's like, it becomes a yeah. part of your family, an heirloom, right? And so I just think that what you're doing is even in a broad scale, really allowing people to have an investment very much yeah. like art that they can keep in perpetuity. That's going to gain in value, just like you're talking about. 
Give yeah, totally. Know, when you talk about kind of the brands and, and the things that you're looking at, how, how yeah. do you source these watches? How do you come up with the competitions? What's kind of the mad science behind the scenes of, you know, what are we <laughs> going to put out there next? Well, you know, the mad science is all in my head. So there's no, there's nothing <laughs> that can be duplicated there. It takes me days to get that written down. But, you know, the thing which I think, you know, separates us from, we're one of the first to do it, thankfully. There's a lot more other businesses out there that are doing it, some to an okay level, some not, some not so great. But I think the one thing that I've always kept in the forefront of my mind is that, you know, this is something that gives back in many different areas. As you said, that parcel of wealth and investment and something which is stable and there as an asset. Um, you know, the philanthropic side of donating to charity and the experience of someone being able to dream for 48 hours, maybe five days. Um, and I think that community has always been at the core of, of what we've been doing. So very much as soon as we finish a competition, we're always trying to get that feedback. We're always trying to find out what the community would like to see next. And that's how we keep everyone excited and, and hopefully everyone, as many as we can do, people included in what we're doing and that decision making of, what, of what's up next. So, you know, we, we've got a big competition running right now. Um, if this was live, I would say go get your tickets. <laughs> uh, but by the time people are listening to this or watching, it will be sold out, I'm sure. But, you know, as soon as that closes and we've picked a winner, we'll be out to the community to pick our next one. There's a few that I've got in mind. Um, but, yeah, that's, that's typically how it works. I think to answer your question as well in terms of how we find them, I have to say, you know, it's not via the AD. It's not via the authorised dealers as, as um, anyone who's ever been in one would, would mostly be able to work out. So there's a couple of really specialist um, watch brokers in the UK who I use, two in fact, um, who can be trusted, who do a good job for me, who source the right level of watches because everything has to be unworn, has to be at least six months old. Uh, and has to come to me as a full set. So they do the due diligence for me and, and quality assurance. So when I've got it, we can just hand it straight over. Yeah, because you you really point out the fact that it comes with the box, the papers, everything. So yeah. that way it's, it's uh, you know, you're, you're getting the full complete investment package. Uh, I go back to that word investment because that's a, an easy way to look at this. Yeah. One of the other things that I really enjoy, which I think is really important, is the fact that you you go online on Instagram as a part of the giveaway. You, <laughs> you get a text message uh, in terms of if you if you purchase tickets, you get a text message saying, "Hey, here's your ticket numbers. We're going live." You get the emails, so you you do everything for the authenticity, the transparency. But then you go online. And you're there talking about it and you show the results and you use a random draw. And so you, you make sure that everyone is a part of the experience to watch it play out so that back to transparency, we can see what's going on. And I think that goes back to building yep. trust and integrity for what you're doing. Share a little bit about that. Yeah, do you know, so the, the key word there, and you said it a few times, is about the transparency, really. And, you know, I'm at the moment it's myself at the center of the business so i'm continuously communicating with the community whether that's via instagram dms messages emails um and i think to tie that in and to to really give people the excitement opportunity to dream for me it has to be live we have to be on there being transparent engaging with our audience and building up the excitement um and, you know, we, we use a random uh, number generator, as you said. It's a third party over here in the UK. It's ASA regulated, and they have their eyes on that to make sure that everything is done properly. But I think it's, you know, it's, it's just that holistic experience, you know. And this is what, at the moment, you know, and, and fingers crossed that people agree with us, separates ourselves from the others that are trying to do it, is that the community comes first. You know, we work on some core fundamentals of giving back and now planting a tree for every ticket that's sold. And it's about transparency. We need to keep that open. We need to show you exactly what we're doing. And, uh, you know, admittedly, it's excitement for me. My heart's racing, trying to find out, waiting to find out who wins. I can only imagine if someone's bought a ticket, what that excitement's like, you know? Are there any of these watches where you're like, I really wish I could keep that one or maybe all of them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, 
every single time. Yeah, I was say, you're like, <laughs> man, like I'm so excited for them, but I really wish I could win this watch too. Yeah, uh, honestly. I mean, if I could if I could enter my own competitions, I bloody would. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's been some hot ones. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to to be able to get a good a couple of good deals on ones that I wear myself. Um, but yeah, there's so many that pass through my hands that I just think, oh, can I buy some tickets? <laughs> But I think as a watch lover, that's what's cool is you can see that you genuinely love yeah. these watches yeah. and you know you like all of them and, you, and you're showing them off and you're excited. And I think that builds that enthusiasm. And like I said, you, you learn a lot about just all these different watches. And, you know, for a lot of us, like we kind of get narrowed in on a certain brand or a certain style, but then all of a sudden yeah. you see all these other options and it's like, mm, that looks really good too. That looks really good too. And, and back to investment, they're all just amazing investments. Yeah. What's something that you've learned as an entrepreneur when you talk about building this business? What's one or two bits of advice that you've learned on your end, but you, you would pass along to other entrepreneurs? Um, do you know, uh, it was it was a very different challenge. You know, I've had a couple of other things that have been successful and not wrapped in a, uh, a widespread business as this is. You know, headhunting for for being called into VC firms or to tech startups is very different. It's about myself and my network, properties, acquiring, you know, rent it out, whatever. Um, with this, the, the one thing that I have realized is that it can't be done alone. You know, the best thing to do is it may cost money. Uh, it may mean a bit more of a headache in terms of managing other personnel, but to hire or invest in a specialist to carry out a specialist task is almost invaluable. That is my, my main piece of advice to anyone that I would ever speak to about setting up a business, you know, any idea that they have. Yeah. Give us a little teaser on the giveaway of <laughs> the, the car side. So you have a contest for cars now. I mean, you're, you're really branching out in some new ventures. So give us a little teaser on kind mm. of these next chapters. Well, there's some breaking news, which uh, I've just signed off uh, a new website. So I'll get to that in a minute. But first and foremost, you mentioned about the cars. Um, you know, the watches is a passion of mine and my brother, his passion is automobiles and cars. He's not gone fully um, down the, the all electric route as I do. I used to have a Tesla, but um, we're launching, we're going to launch our, our second competition on the car side. And it's really his baby. You know, I've managed now to be able to get the right infrastructure in and he's pushing everything on the car side. And you know, with the Tesla, what it does do, because of their global distribution, it allows us to, again, as we do with the watches, have a real inclusive worldwide competition. So that's going to be launched in the next six weeks. Um, I'm sure you'll provide all the links and everything. But so, you know, we're doing the we're doing the watches, the car giveaway, our second one will be coming up with the Tesla. And, you know, admittedly, I, I really enjoy drinking wine of an evening. So we're, <laughs> we're going to have uh, some collectible, some assets of wine coming up soon as well, which are, you know, we've, we're thinking about doing four and a half crates. So there might be a, the opportunity to drink a couple, but our advice is to keep hold of those rare wines that we're going to be doing soon. So that's the trio of competitions we're planning on doing. It's, of course, everything Lux. Um, I think we'll stop there, to be honest, <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> about to say, yeah. um, <laughs> don't ever say we, we, we might stop there because you know, that's that's the uh, famous last words where it's like no you're gonna be doing a lot more than that so uh, yeah. before we wrap up talk about the uh, watch on your wrist because for guys who are into watches you can tell really fast so it's obviously a paddock philippe but what is it a 5712 <laughs> is that what you're wearing or what what, what watch do you have on your wow. wrist? It well you're the watch confused us because you've managed to spy that very easily haven't you but uh yeah, on my wrist is the the fifty seven twelve. It's it's uh, yeah, yeah. It's my yeah. it's my favorite. Uh, you know, with this, you asked me about watches that I wish I could keep. I purchased this to, to plan to do for a competition. Um, I bought it from the person who bought it from the AD and got a good deal. Um, and it was sitting on the side for a long while, just just smiling at me. And I thought, I'm gonna bloody wear that. <laughs> um, and now and now I can't take it off <laughs> <laughs> but I think it goes back well, to like it. I said, if you are into watches you can tell really fast and uh, I mean I've got some watches on my end that people you know you, you can tell like for most people they wouldn't they wouldn't notice it 
They, they wouldn't notice yeah. it in terms of what it is. And I think that's like, when you look at a paddock, that's a, to me, that's one of the things is they're very understated. Now the one you have on is a little more overstated, but a lot of them are understated, but it's like, if you know your watches, you know, that's a very expensive watch, but for anybody mm -hmm. else, just general public, it's not necessarily going to catch their eye. And I think that's a very good thing when you talk about an investment. So anyway, I love your watch. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Thank you very much. When I come over, when I come over, we'll, we can geek out about watches. But yeah, oh, some break. So you know, breaking news for you. It's mostly more for our community, but something for any watch lover to get excited by. But you know, based off the back of the success that we've had with the watches and being about really enticing watch enthusiasts into our competition, we're going to be launching like a members network subscription of small price per month, and within that, it's very much like content led. Uh, we've got some partnerships with people like the watch stand and Everest bands and stuff like that. Um, and the plan is just to provide you guys with that central place of community around watches, investment advice, um, and also a place to capture all your content. You know, we're going to try and um, do a giveaway, a watch giveaway to one member every single month. Um, but what that allows us to do, you know, there's certain economics at work with the competition, but with the watches, we're really good. We're really drilling in on enthusiasts and collectors. So we can do some limited edition Amiga Speedmasters. We're going to get some Cartiers in there. Of course, there would be the usual Rolex, et cetera. But we can really widen what we're doing there, um, get some vintage classics in. So that's going to be launching soon. I've literally just signed off the wireframe. So I shall let you know the link on that one as well. Very cool. And I think that's another, to me, just really powerful lesson for other entrepreneurs is when you build an audience and you build a platform mm -hmm. like you have, you have a very loyal, enthusiastic audience that all of a sudden now, just like you're doing, you can take it from this experience into this experience and this experience, and you can build on it. And then you can start subdividing it and narrowing it in scope in terms of really giving even more value to that select group who's willing to pay more because now they're getting more value. Yeah. So I just think that building an audience is what you've done. And that's a tremendous opportunity for you moving forward. And I think that's why, you know, really you're just now brushing the surface in terms of what you're going to be able to create just because you're creating your own audience that really is excited about uh, you know what you're doing, and, and that leads to really good things for everyone. So, wrap up on your end with website, Instagram handle. Where all do we go to learn more about Luxury Watch Supply and what you're doing? So you can find us at luxurywatchsupply.com, luxcarsupply.com, soon to be luxwinesupply.com. Um, we'll have the link through to all the sites on that, and also if you want to follow our uh, Instagram pages, it's Lux watch supply and lux car supply um i'm sure jeremy you'll have all of the links at the bottom of the page or somewhere that you need to for us so that is it guys absolutely well brad thank you for all you're doing greatly appreciate it keep up the good work and uh we'll see you again soon thanks for having me take care